So the observable properties of a gas and the postulates of the theory of explaining what a gas is made of and how it's composed lead us to a couple of processes now. So effusion and diffusion are processes. So the first is effusion. And effusion is the word that we use to describe the process of a gas escaping a container. So for example, if I were to take this container of gas and I open it up, I can't see it, but right now there are many, many, many molecules of gas escaping this container. There are other molecules out here that are entering the container at the same time. Well, there's a way that we could actually observe this process. We don't observe it with our eyes, but we can observe it with our nose. If you had a bottle of cologne or perfume and you were to take the lid off and smell at the lid, you would be able to smell the vapors, the gases from the fragrance effusing from the container. So that's an example of a gas effusing or escaping a container. Let's just draw a simple diagram here. I'm going to make my gas container a nice round bottom flask. And we know that if I have gas particles inside this container, again we can't see them, right? But we know that they're there. And we know that they are bouncing around, they're moving all around in a random manner. all over the place, right? And if I take the lid off of this container, eventually the gas molecule will bounce, 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 bounce. It may be bouncing off of other gas molecules, or it may be bouncing off of the wall of the container, but eventually it will keep bouncing until it eventually just bounces right out of the container. And that process of the gas molecule bouncing eventually out of the container is effusion. The next important process related to this is called diffusion. Diffusion. And diffusion is the process of a gas mixing with another gas. So, a way to draw this, I'm going to draw two flasks here. I've got my gas in one flask. And I've got another gas in another flask right here. And I'm going to connect the two flasks. And I'm going to put a valve right here that can close them off. So, right now the one gas cannot mix with the other. And let's Put a couple of different gases in here. Obviously, again, you can't actually see the gases, but I'm drawing these dots here so we can track what's happening. So we have two gases there. And we know that these gases are bouncing around. They're moving in a, in a straight line, all in random directions. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Now, what is going to happen when I open the valve so that there's a free motion between this channel. Well, the gases over here are going to bounce, 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 and they're going to fill up the whole space because remember that gases occupy the whole space and volume of their container. And so eventually some of these molecules will bounce their way over in this other area. And the same is going to happen for this gas. It's going to bounce, 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 and eventually some of those gas molecules will find their way over in this area. 
and so we see that the two gases have now mixed. The one gas now occupies the whole container, and the other gas now occupies the whole container space. And that is the process of diffusion, when we allow two gases to mix. Okay, those are a couple of processes. It's good to know what those are, be familiar with them. Now we could do some mathematical treatment on these gases, depending on what the gases are. And we could decide how fast they're going to effuse or diffuse, how fast they're going to effuse from a, a container, or how fast they will diffuse with each other. But for this simple model, I just want us to be familiar with the general trend. And the general trend is that the rates, the speed at which diffusion and effusion occur, are inversely proportional to the square root of the gas's molar mass. And this is Graham's law. And it might be a little bit hard to parse that sentence. Inversely proportional to the square root of the molar mass. So let's think about what this means. The heavier a gas molecule is, that is the higher its molar mass, its square root of its mass is going to be a higher number. And the rate will be inversely proportional to that. So the rate of diffusion and effusion will be lower. So let's, let's represent this this way. As the gas is, as we increase the molar mass, the rates decrease. And what does rate mean? It's just the speed at which they effuse and diffuse. Another way of saying that is how fast are the gases moving. So an even simpler way of thinking about this is that heavier molecules tend to travel slower. And lighter molecules tend to travel faster. So I've got a high-tech demo of a marble and a bowling ball. And I'm going to do this little demo for you. And this demonstration uses the most sophisticated technology that we know. And that is our imaginations. Because I don't actually have a marble and a bowling ball. And you wouldn't be able to see them very effectively even if I did. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to imagine that I have a marble and a bowling ball. Okay? The marble represents a very light gas atom, for example, a helium atom. And the bowling ball that I would have here would represent a very heavy gas, for example, something like a xenon. So I'm going to add a certain amount of kinetic energy to this marble. And the way I'm going to represent that is I'm going to thump this marble. So I'm about to thump the marble here. So the marble's here. Imagine that. And I'm about to thump the marble, okay? You ready? And I want you to watch what happens to the marble as it heads off. Can you imagine this? All right, here we go. And I'm thumping the marble. Did you see in your mind, did you see how fast that marble traveled? It traveled really quickly, didn't it? Because the amount of kinetic energy that I gave to it was enough to make a very small lightweight particle travel fast. Now we're going to imagine that I've got this big bowling ball sitting right here. Weighs a lot more, right? And now I'm going to impart the exact same amount of kinetic energy, which is another way of saying I'm going to put it at the same temperature as the, as the marble. And I want you to watch how slowly this bowling ball moves. Okay, you ready? Watching the bowling ball right here. Here we go. I thump it, and the bowling ball is barely moving. Right? All right. 
Now that's kind of a silly little demonstration, but I think you'll remember it because what it means is at a given temperature, that is for a given average kinetic energy, smaller, lighter gas molecules travel faster on average and heavier and heavier gas molecules are traveling slower. And if you're traveling slower, that means it's going to take longer for you to effuse your way out of a container. If you're traveling slower, it's going to take longer for you to diffuse any other gas. Whereas if you're lightweight and traveling faster, you're going to bounce your way out of that container very quickly. Or you're going to diffuse and mix with the other gas very quickly. So that's all I want you to, to pick up from this. There is a relationship here. The heavier the molecule, the slower it travels, and therefore the slower the rates. So how do we represent this in a, in a question? Well, obviously I could ask you anything sort of like what is effusion, what is diffusion, what is the proportionality between molar mass and the rate of those. Or I could put it in a form of this kind of problem here. So I'm going to ask you to do this problem. And this problem says, rank the relative rates, that is their rates relative to each other, of diffusion of the following gases. And so I want you to put the fastest one first. So we're going to rank them in relative rates. The fastest, is one, the fastest one is going to come first, and then we're going to go slower and slower and slower. So I would like for you to do that now. First of all, I'll do the first one for you just to get you off on the, on the right track. Which one is going to come first? It's the fastest one, right? We want the fastest rate. We want the fastest average speed. Which one is that going to be? It's going to, going to be the one with the lowest molar mass. It's the inverse relationship here. So which of these has the lowest molar mass? Well, I hope you can see that it's going to be H2, diatomic hydrogen gas. So there's our fastest first. And that is going to be greater or fastest faster than, and we're going to just leave some space for the others. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And I would like for you to pause the video and go ahead and complete that ranking. All right, coming back from pausing the video, we're going to take a look at the molar masses of each of these gases. And to do that, we need our periodic table. So I'm going to look for the next one, the next lowest, an O2. Let's see, O2. So oxygen is 15.999 or 16. And if I have two of them, I have 32. So this is approximately 32. What about N2? Nitrogen is 14.007. And if I double that, that's about 28, so about 28. For NH3, so for nitrogen is about 14, and three more for the three hydrogens, 15, 16, and 17, so this is about 17. CH4, well, I've got 12 for the carbon and about four more for the four hydrogens. So that's about 16. Approxi These are approximate molar masses. I'm not doing math on them like in a stoichiometry, so I'm only getting approximate numbers, and th that's fine. And then CO2, carbon is 12. Two oxygens is two times 16 is 32, plus 12 is 44. So that's about 44, oops, 44. So now that I know their approximate molar masses, I can determine their relative rates. The higher their molar mass, the slower their rate. So the highest molar mass is CO2, that's gonna be the absolute slowest. 
What's going to come after H2? Well, the lowest molar mass traveling fastest other than H2 is going to be CH4. Next would be NH3. Next would be N2. Next would be O2. And there we go. I've ranked the relative rates of diffusion, which would also be the relative rates of effusion, wouldn't it? Starting from fastest first and going to the slowest, which is another way of saying starting from the lightest and going to the heaviest, because there's an inverse relationship there.